Welcome to the goal setting tool set, setting goals you're motivated to complete. This tool set describes how to set goals using research conducted by Richard Wiseman and described in his book 59 Seconds, Think a Little, Change a Lot. Goals are the means by which we make things happen or create change in our lives. The process of achieving goals is difficult, especially those that can take weeks, months or years of effort require us to make sacrifices along the way. In order to increase our chances of successfully completing our goal, we need to invest time in the front end of the process, goal setting. Wiseman's research findings involving 5,000 participants from around the world, together with a separate piece of work by another researcher, Gabriella Oettingen, are used to create a five-step process for setting your goals. This toolset consists of this presentation together with a prompt sheet for setting goals that you're motivated to complete. In this presentation, and using a case study, we'll look at a five-step process for goal setting, which involves defining the goal, having a step-by-step -step plan, reminding yourself of the benefits of realising your goal, being realistic, and telling other people. In his book, 59 Seconds, Think a Little, Change a Lot, Richard Wiseman describes two studies into the psychology of motivation. 5,000 subjects from around the world participated in the studies with goals ranging from losing weight, gaining a qualification, to starting a new relationship. At the end of the studies, the participants were asked to describe the techniques they used to help them achieve their goals. It's worth noting that only around 10% of participants managed to achieve their goal. The 10 techniques most frequently used by the participants were make a step-by-step -step plan, motivate myself by focusing on someone I admire for achieving so much, for example a celebrity role model or leader, tell other people about my goals, think about the bad things that will happen if I don't achieve my goal, Think about all the good things that will happen if I achieve my goal. Try to suppress unhelpful thoughts. For example, not thinking about eating unhealthy food or smoking. Reward myself for making progress towards my goal. Rely on willpower. Record my progress. For example, keep a journal or a chart. And fantasize about how great my life will be when I achieve my goal. Wiseman's review of the study data found that when using one of the odd-numbered techniques, a participant was significantly more likely to realise their goal. In his book, Wiseman uses these findings to create a process made up of the odd-numbered techniques to help set goals with the aim of increasing the likelihood of completing them. Chris has decided that the youth club he works at needs a blog while his fellow youth workers agree that a blog would be a great way of sharing news and providing the young people at the club with the opportunity to share their views, Chris knows that it's up to him to make the blog a reality. Convinced that the club would benefit from having one, Chris watches this presentation and then downloads the goal setting prompt sheet. When defining your goal, make sure that it does the following things. It has a positive intention. Whatever the goal, your reason for achieving it needs to be positive. A positive goal is one that involves getting something as a result of achieving it. It's acquisitive. Negative goals are about avoiding something or not doing something. They're inhibiting. The problem with goals that are inhibiting is that if we lapse when we're trying to achieve them, we run the risk of encountering the what the hell effect. Imagine that your goal is to stop eating sweet things. Now imagine that you're having coffee at a friend's house and he asks you to try one of his homemade cookies. Not wanting to offend your friend, you try one. It tastes good and you tell him. So he offers you another one. In this scenario, especially where an inhibiting or negative goal is at work, because it's been disrupted, we run the risk of thinking, what the hell, I've had one cookie and I'm not supposed to, I may as well have another. In addition to laying ourselves open to the what the hell effect, negative goals can make us vulnerable to what are called ironic processes of mental control. 
Put simply, when we try to stop ourselves from thinking about something, our thought processes work in such a way that we inadvertently think about the very thing we're trying to avoid. The instruction, don't think of an elephant, leads to an image in our mind's eye of an elephant. The same goes for negative goals, since we end up thinking of the very thing we're trying to avoid. Telling yourself not to eat the cookie can make you susceptible to doing just that, because you have to imagine eating it first before you can think about not eating it. Positive or acquisitive goals focus on working towards something. In our cookie scenario, if our goal is to have a trim waistline, while we may have had that first cookie, the what the hell effect is less likely to kick in since the sense of disruption or the breaking of our goal is not so strong. A goal without a date is just a dream. Having a date by which to achieve our goal focuses the mind. It also helps with planning what needs to be done and by when, after we've broken down the goal into its bite-sized pieces. Remember our case study? Here's what Chris wrote when working through the goal-setting prompt sheet. To have a blog that is written and read by members of the youth club. The blog and the first article would be ready by the 30th of September. Make a step-by-step -step plan. Once you've decided what your goal is, you need to break it down into manageable bite-sized pieces that will form a step-by-step -step plan. Each bite-sized piece, or sub-goal, must contain answers to the following questions. Why do you feel that you can achieve this sub-goal? What will you need to achieve this sub-goal? When will you have completed this sub-goal? And how will you reward yourself for completing this sub-goal? A goal should consist of up to no more than five sub-goals. Chris identifies his sub-goals, the five main things he will need to do in order to create the blog by September 30th. He will need to 1. Decide on what to write about and how often. 2. Give the blog a name that is also an available domain name. 3. Decide on whether to use a blogging service or a web host. 4. Build the blog site. and 5. Write the first article. If your goal is something you've not done before, or if it involves a topic or subject that you're unfamiliar with, make sure to do some research. Search the internet, read a book, or talk to an expert, someone who's achieved a goal similar to yours, in order to understand what it involves and the key steps that need to be taken in order to complete it. Chris uses the prompt sheet to remind him about what he needs to know for each of his sub-goals. Here's what he wrote for his first sub-goal. Decide on what to write about and how often. To the question, why do you feel that you can achieve this sub-goal, Chris writes, because I already have a list of subjects that I want to write about, as well as a number of young people who have opinions they want to voice. The list of subjects is long enough for me to write a piece on a fortnightly basis for the next 12 months. To the question, what do you need to achieve the sub-goal, Chris writes, I need to share my list with my manager and get his approval for me to write the articles. Get approval from everyone else my manager feels that I should approach. In answer to, when will you complete this sub-goal by, Chris realises that he will need 10 days to complete this task, since his manager and any of the others who will want to give their approval may not be immediately available for him to talk to. Chris writes down the 10th of September for completing this sub-goal. Since it's not something that he's done before, Chris takes a moment to consider his answer to how will you reward yourself for completing the sub-goal? He decides that when his list has been approved, he'll treat himself the next day to coffee and cake just before he starts his shift. Chris answers the prompt sheet's questions again, this time for his second sub-goal. He does the same for his third, fourth and fifth sub-goals, so that he has a step-by-step -step plan for accomplishing his goal. Describe the benefits of the goal. We need a reason to pursue and then complete a goal. 
knowing how we will benefit from achieving our goal, how our future will be better as a result of completing it, provides the necessary motivation when we experience a setback. We have to choose between working on our goal or something that's either more pleasant or less challenging, or others either directly or indirectly express our lack of belief in our ability to achieve the goal. Just like defining positive goals, think carefully about what you will get when describing the benefits of your goal. Describe what you want rather than what you do not want or want to avoid. Descriptions such as, I won't be smoking 40 cigarettes a day, or I won't hate myself when I look in the mirror, or I won't be stressed by those people again, will do little or nothing to motivate us when we hit a setback or when a friend or family member is being unsupportive. Remember those ironic processes of mental control? Depending on how you state a negative benefit, you run the risk of getting the very thing you want to avoid. Rather than thinking about what you will lose or will avoid, reframe your thoughts so that you're gaining something as a consequence of completing your goal. For instance, if you want to give up your 40 cigarettes a day habit, think about what you'll have as a consequence of doing so. Better health, the money you would have spent on cigarettes, tasting more of your food, and so on. Using the prompt sheet, Chris writes down the three benefits of completing his goal to create a youth club blog. Benefit 1. Members of the youth club, especially those who don't have the confidence to voice their opinions, can do so by commenting on and contributing to the articles. Benefit 2. The blog will provide both the local community and the borough council with an insight into the work that goes on at the youth club, as well as its value to the young people who use it. Benefit 3. The young people are more likely to learn from the lessons of their peers, who will either write or contribute to articles on relationships, bullying, underage drinking, finding work, and drug abuse. Be realistic. Although not part of his work, Wiseman highlights the importance of a finding by another researcher, Gabriella Ottigen, that increases the likelihood of completing a goal. Ottigen's research, like Wiseman's, found that if we fantasise or daydream about how good our lives would be after we've completed our goal, we are then less likely to complete it. This is because our brains cannot tell the difference between the feelings of satisfaction and gratification that we have after completing a goal from the same feelings we experience when we fantasise about completing it. Such fantasy-induced feelings can reduce our motivation to complete our goal. More of this in Step 5, Tell Others. Ottergen's experiments also showed that this effect could not only be reversed, but could be used to motivate us if we included a realistic assessment of the problems we might encounter as we pursue our goal. In our experiments, Ottergen asked the subjects to think of a benefit they would get from completing their goal. She then asked them to think of the problems they may encounter as they went about completing the goal and how they might overcome these. Ottergen's experiments showed that those subjects who thought about the benefits as well as the problems they might encounter and how they would deal with them were more likely to complete their goals than those who considered just the benefits or just the problems. Chris reviews the next section of the prompt list. He reads the following instruction. Go back and read the description for your first benefit. Members of the youth club especially those who don't have the confidence to voice their opinions, can do so by commenting on and contributing to the articles. He then reads the following question. What kind of problems might you encounter as you work to realise this benefit? Chris identifies two problems. The first is that club members might not be willing to submit an article because for some, being able to express themselves through writing would be too challenging and time-consuming. His solution is to let the club members know that I'll be available to help them either with the writing or by interviewing them and then writing an article based on what they've told me. He then writes that 
Another problem might be anonymity. While most of the members will have something to say, they won't necessarily want others to know it was them who said it, either in an article or comment. Chris's solution is to make sure that we use nicknames or aliases in articles if requested and that members wanting to leave a comment can sign in under an alias. Chris then goes on to identify and solve problems for his other two benefits. Tell others. While Wiseman's research found that telling others about our goal made us likely to complete it, other researchers have found the opposite. Telling others reduces the likelihood of us achieving our goal. When we describe our goal to another in a way that sounds as if we've completed it, for instance, next year I will have run the London Marathon in under four hours, we unintentionally create the feeling of satisfaction that we would normally have after completing our goal. When this occurs, the need to complete the goal is reduced because the feeling of satisfaction that comes with achieving it has already been experienced. To make matters worse, when those whom we've told acknowledge our goal, for example, that sounds great, I know you'll come in under four hours, it creates what's called a social reality in our mind, so that we experience the gratification that we would normally feel after we've completed the goal. Unfortunately, this then leaves us less motivated to pursue it. Sometimes, we don't tell others about our goal to avoid the embarrassment we might experience if we fail to achieve it. But in doing so, we're under no pressure to do those things that completing our goal would require. When we go public, as Wiseman's research shows, we're more likely to stick to our goals. More importantly, other researchers work in this area has demonstrated that knowing we have another support has a positive impact on our motivation when we know that things will get tough. When you tell others about your goal, avoid describing it as if you've completed it. Rather than describing the outcome of achieving the goal, focus on the goal's objective. So the outcome, next year, I will have run the London Marathon in under four hours, becomes the objective, I'm training five times a week for next year's London Marathon. Describing our goal in this way helps others to understand our commitment to something we want to achieve. It also suggests the kind of support we would get from them, such as asking how many runs we've been on during the week. Chris reviews the following tasks on the prompt list. List the groups and individuals you will tell. Decide how you will tell each of them. He then writes down his answers. Wiseman's research found that those people who wrote down their goals significantly boosted their chances of success. By using paper and pen, or a computer to complete the prompt list, you will make your goal tangible, since it no longer lives in your head, and is less likely to be forgotten or deviated from. Writing down your goals helps you to revisit your answers regularly. It enables you to review your sub-goals and check whether you're on track to meet your completion dates. And when you do complete a sub-goal, and even if you're late in meeting your deadline, a written goal reminds you to reward yourself. Rereading the benefits you've identified will remind you about why you're pursuing your goal, as well as highlight how you will overcome those problems that could stop you from realising them. Once you've completed the prompt sheet's tasks and set your goal, why not watch the following toolset presentations for achieving goals? These toolsets will show you how to manage both yourself and your goal in order to complete it. Based on the research of Richard Wiseman, we're more likely to complete the goals we've set ourselves if we define the goal, have a step-by-step -step plan, remind ourselves of the benefits of realising our goal, be realistic, and tell other people. Use this toolset's prompt sheet to help you set a goal that you're more likely to complete.